Good afternoon, everyone. When it comes to explaining the grand solar minimum, there's all these scientific terms around it. And when you try to explain it using the jargon within this type of astrophysics community, geological community, agribusiness community, wherever you are, it's too complicated to explain it. You have to bring it down to a simplified level using simple, easy to understand English or any other language spoken on this planet to take the complexity out of it so people can understand what's happening with the intensification of the grand solar minimum, what's to be expected, and how our weather's gonna be affected on our planet, which ultimately results in crop losses. And this is the biggest thing to contend with. Sure, volcanic eruptions, if you're in the local area, a year without a summer, that could be something, localized floods, but the end of the day, it is about our global agriculture system being affected where we're growing grains right now, specifically at 45 degrees north and above in North America, 50 degrees north and above in Europe, 50 degrees north and above in China. These areas are going to start to go offline. Literally, they're not going to have the yields coming out. So this was my explanation to you, and I'll have this available on my website for you to download with the high-res graphics so you can share this in your communities at oilseedcrops.org grand solar minimum resources tab it's like a diamond it truly is there's so many facets to this so when we try to describe it and explain it you know, that's a big breath a huge mouthful of words to try to explain to everybody all these changes that are coming because of this one single event due to our sun going into a 400 year slumber so I tried to take into consideration not only the sun's decrease, but the solar wind decreasing as well. And the primer field on the sun, according to Rolf Witche and David Lapointe, coming down to, well, it's collapse mode. The cosmic ray increase is due to our weakening magnetosphere. And as the sun's output decreases electrically connected to our planet, which drives our magnetosphere, so I should say electromagnetically connected, our weakening magnetosphere is going to allow more cosmic rays to come in. And with that being said, there's a definite correlation of increased cosmic rays and silica-rich magma chambers erupting. And this is why it is a 100% correlation of huge VEI, seven eruptions during grand solar minimums. Also, cosmic rays have been pegged to more cloud formation, which is why we're seeing all these floods and atmospheric compression events. Also, weakening magnetosphere is going to allow more space to breathe in, more cometary, dust, more rocks, more whatever's being dragged and we're pushing through outside of our atmosphere is allowed in at much, much, much lower levels. That's why you're seeing so many fireballs. So many reports of shaking from above the skies. It's all pinned on the North Pole and the wandering jet streams. Again, when our magnetosphere gets weak, our jet streams just go completely out of their positions. And this is what's truly gonna cause these crop losses. And then, you know, you got these magnificent sized hailstones falling out of the sky already. Something that's in the couple pound range, but as was reported through all the grand solar minimums, it's gonna get up into the five, six, eight pound hailstone range coming down soon. One thing, it's gonna affect our crop production. And this is why we need to seriously explain it. I tried to bring it down to explaining it to a five-year-old child with this chart. I mean, I tried to make it as easy to understand. It's all the facets of this grand solar minimum culminating to affect our planetary food system. This is what we need to talk about. You know, electrical phenomena in the atmosphere. This is down in Australia. You have to check out the progression of these ground to sky lightning. That's our Earth equalizing the charge with the sun. As the sun decreases, our Earth also needs to match that step down. And it's got to de-electrify itself, if you will. It needs to as a cosmic capacitor itself equalized charge. And this is what the ancients would have seen in the sky. This is plasma. This was a 13 second event. It almost looks like some Nikola Tesla machine going wild out of the ground. But imagine if this had stayed up there for 13 minutes, 13 hours as a plasma display. This is where some of our petroglyphs are coming from. We got to mix up in the atmosphere as huge dust storms ripping off of Africa out of displaced winds with all these crushing blizzards out of season coming down out of Europe, creating orange snow blanketing the Alps and areas across Eastern Europe. 
This is the single snowfall total coming out of here as they were driving down the roads in southern Italy for that last storm that combined with all of the dust. You know, atmospheric anomalies abound. These types of spectacular displays in nature. You should be looking at these in awe and wonder. And also, what's the message that's being given to us? Our Earth is telling us something. Are we tuning in? We were told it's supposed to be all-time record heat. Here we are, months early snow in Australia. And Australian media claiming, ah, oh, no, it's no, nothing out of the ordinary. Our weather will get back to normal. But look at the size of the falls. And these events of, you know, atmospheric compression, rivers from the sky, arc storms, you know, it's coming all-time record rains in California. We got it down in Brazil. You know, snowstorms that are not in their normal patterns. This is delaying what would be a spring race. This is what they got, snowfall. This is the southeast U.S. And so kick back on the front porch with a nice cup of lemonade. Virginia snowfall. These things are late. And the signs are above us as well. The amount of fireballs coming into our atmosphere is increasing day by day. And they're being captured with such long duration, much larger objects are making it down into the lower atmosphere and also contacting ground with the in-air bursts that are also rattling on the earth. So I've tried to wrap this up. This is your graphic. Hope you can use it. Everybody from a child to an adult needs to know what's happening because the solutions are going to come from all strata of society, all ages of society. All races of our society. This is a global problem. Global solutions will arise in times of uncertainty. Ingenuity just abounds out of the human race. And this time I think it will be no different. I think it will actually be amplified due to the increasing cosmic rays. We're in the grand dance of the universe. We're in the grand dance of the solar system. The electric universe. Our electric star our electric earth. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video and please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030.